ways. And so I, I think we can alternate. Um, this might be too many um, topics for uh, just one 30-minute session. And so I think that we might want to kind of talk about, uh, say, large model support later. But I thought that we could at least start with uh, three other topics. Uh, so error handling and then um, kind of revamping or enhancing model zoo. And then um, also kind of on the quantization side, this was also tied to uh, some of the model zoo side of things, but uh, basically uh, implementing more operations or uh, operators or um, also kind of hosting the quantization or quantized models on model zoo. So those are kind of the, the topics that were suggested by the community, and I wanted to have this chance to talk about uh, with uh, the people who actually suggested this. So, um, yeah, shall we go through the list? Um, any any questions before we any questions or comments before we uh, get started? Um, can I have a uh, general question, please? Yeah, yeah. Um, I know we have a series of meetings to go over roadmap items. I, I wonder what would be the impact to release 1.8? Wait. Are we wait, going to eventually recommend certain items to be included? Yeah. Uh, so we actually talked about it uh, right before this uh, particular roadmap session. Uh, basically, we want to utilize the next three sessions to talk about the cost and impact analysis. Uh, so that will give us a sense of uh, prioritization, which of the items uh, that uh, were suggested by the committee that we should work on first. Uh, okay. Ideally, it has the highest impact and low cost. Um, and so that will follow. Uh, we kind of, uh, so far, kind of covered the three sessions that we've done, including this one. We wanted to cover the horizontal perspective and then the vertical perspective and then the core of the Onyx. And so those are kind of the three sessions that we wanted to utilize to kind of get all the um, the items that were suggested by the community to talk about them. And then the next three sessions, uh, we want to kind of uh, apply the cost and impact analysis, uh, figure out the prioritization, and then we also wanted to map uh, who might be interested in working on um, the, the ones that we identify as a high impact and low cost um, uh, projects for the items. So that's kind of uh, what we talked about prior to this meeting. Jin, this would okay. be for post 1.8. 1.8 is already kind of underway, right? Right, that's, that's correct too. I, for, I forgot that uh, the question was uh, kind of uh, tied to the 1.8 release. So, thanks, thanks for that. So, essentially, all uh, we are talking about here will be post 1.8. Not if not all, but most of them will be. I would expect I so because I mean, just because uh, these probably don't exist, and unless you think something <laughs> is small enough that it can get done in the next right. Week. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank and you. So, yeah, no worries. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, it, and I'll also try to post this so that it brings a bit more of a clarity. This is the, the first time that we open up the movement discussion to the public. So uh, there are some um, uh, things that we have to do better. And uh, uh, having that um, feedback really helps. So uh, let us know what we can improve and then we can um, implement it. And so I think. Um, and we can start with the, the first item, error handling. I did see Adam uh, Poka, uh, who suggested one of the items here. And so Adam, um, would you be able to kind of talk through um, the, the particular item that you suggested here? Sure, so, um, sorry. Uh, so that's, it's mainly, you know, we want to use um, the, the runtime to, um, to load in models and serve them. Um, and we would like, uh, at the moment, the runtime calls through to the Onyx model loading code and the protobufs inside. Um, and if those protobufs are malformed in any way, um, it, it seg faults the checking. Um, and then it takes the whole runtime down and the JVM that was attached to it because um, we were working in Java. Uh, and that's um, that's not great. So just the, the model checker, we really, and the, the loading code, we really don't want to ever terminate, ever. Um, Right. It, I'm fine if it throws an exception or returns some error code or something, but but seg faulting um, is is really a horrible user experience for us because we have to bring the web server that was serving things back up again, um, and and that's obviously very difficult and, and not great for deployment. So it's, it's really just ensuring that the, the checker is robust to a wide variety of models. You know, if we want to load in something that's not especially trusted, 
um, that has its own issues, right? But but um, if we want to do that, we we really don't want the untrusted model to be able to take down um, take down the process. Um, so yeah, it's just that we've done some fuzzing on it. I, I know some of the people at Microsoft have done some fuzzing on it as well. Um, and everything every time we fuzz it, um, we take down the model checker and or the loader and and, and uh, so. Yeah, just just working on that. I think is really the, the point there. Okay, thanks for your session. And I think um, what Chaming suggested at the top also kind of reflects what you're mentioning here: uh, fuzzing the code and uh, preventing crash. And uh, I think he also wanted to have a code discussion free, but I I know that there is a lot of comments uh, from the the community that was uh, a bit against this one. Um, and it kind of also talked about something that uh, other people talked about last time, uh, which is basically uh, the consideration that Onyx is a spec and we need to keep it that way and so forth. But um, at least on the, the uh, making sure that the code doesn't or the, the crash doesn't happen, I think that uh, is something that we did, we do need to really look into. So thank you for your suggestion. Um, just to clarify, I believe Onyx runtime has a bit different checking from Onyx Checker. Is that correct? I believe so. So yes. th this model that we had that fuzzed it also crashed the checker um, when you run it through Python. Um, and, and so you get like that, that error message saying that the, the checker just went away um, mm -hmm. and here is some error message. And I think that's probably the same root thing where the checker might be in a different process and it's egg faulted and, and the Python process went, oh, it went and died. So. I think that improving the error handling of the loading and code in general will will help. Um, I'm I'm not clear on on how the internals of Onyx runtime actually loads models, but um, when I raised uh, the issue, they pointed. I don't think Onyx runtime directly uses the Onyx model checker or the Onyx protobuf loader, but um, would be curious to dig into that more. Uh, have you have you just tried using like the Onyx code to load an invalid model and that crashes somehow? Uh, yes. Well, so you can load the model in and then you run the model checker on and it looks like the model checker itself crashes. Oh, it's a model checker, not... That, so it, it's not clear to me how lazy that loading is. Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't had done a full sort of dive into that, but when I raised the issue on Onyx Runtime, um, it occasionally got pointed back to the Onyx protobufs and some code that was in there um, that, that was failing. Um, I'm not a, a C++ programmer, really, so I, I, I didn't follow exactly the, the details of that. Okay. So is it possible to use the same checker between Onyx and Onyx Runtime? Well, the, uh, I uh, maybe, uh, but I, I don't remember. Is the Onyx model checker written in C++ or is it written in Python? Um, Onyx Runtime uh, uses C++, so. Right, yeah. First of all, the, we should be able to check with the, your team, um, the Onyx uh, runtime side, and then. Yep. Okay. Uh, it looks like the checker is written in C. There's a checker.cc file, or C++. I see. And so um, what Bushan suggested, um, the, the better crash and handling on Onyx runtime, um, this is something that it's not in context of Onyx itself, but I think it will be beneficial to do that uh, tied with the discussion that we are having. So, uh, what do you think, Prasant? Uh Yeah, I mean, uh, probably need to follow up with him on what he means. If it's talking about the same thing that Adam is reporting, then it's probably related. Uh, if it's something else, I don't know. And, and what does he mean by crash, I guess? Okay. Uh, he's not on the call, yeah. and uh, I don't think that Onyx Runtime, uh, I'm not sure they're, they're developers are on the call, but we can follow up with them. Okay, let's follow up. Um, so I think uh, in the context of time, we do want to talk about other uh, ones here. And so any questions uh, uh, on or comments on the air handling before we move on? Okay, so uh, we can move on to model zoom, and then Adam, you're also you also commented on this one, so would you give us, a, um, would you explain the, the suggestion that you um, have here? 
Sure. Sorry, just let me, I'm just pasting something into the chat for the previous issue. Um, so uh, I uh, write a library called Trivio, which launched this week, um, which has sort of provenance and tracking information as one of the core components in the machine learning system. And we interact with um, the Onyx ecosystem via Onyx runtime. We, we serve Onyx models um, using that system. Um, and we'd like to expose the metadata fields and we'd like to record the metadata fields um, in the near future when we get around to exporting Onyx models from Tribio, which currently we don't do, but we're planning to do. Um, but Tribio models expose a huge amount of metadata and the, the sort of metadata schema that's in, uh, the model metadata schema that's encoded in the Onyx format is pretty lacking, right? There's that custom field and you can put lots of stuff in there, but unless there's any sort of schema on that custom field, it's difficult to know what you're reading. So I, I guess my point here is mainly, it would be nice if there was a bunch of um, predefined schema fields like there are for version and provider and, and a couple of others that I forget the, the, the details of. I think I, I listed some of them. Um, but it would be nice if there was a, a field for like the timestamp when this model was created, whatever training algorithm was used for this model, maybe what source library was used to generate it. Um, and it, it, those can all be optional and that's, you know, I, I wouldn't expect everybody to fill them in, but we'd fill them in and then we'd know that we'd be able to read the right fields out. And I feel like other people serving Onyx models, that would be useful to them if it was just denoted that this is a valid metadata field. Adam, do you think it would be sufficient to just define standard key value, key names? To yes. Use in and, that metadata field? Yeah, I think that would probably be sufficient. Um, and, and like, if you can type them as well, I mean, I know they're string strings, um, but um, you know, if it was like this metadata key will, mm -hmm. will be a string, but it should be able to be parsed as a date time or you know, that kind of thing. Right. I think um, that would be sufficient. Um, it's just having some schema on it so that um, libraries that wanted to write to it could do and would have it, would understand that that's the format of it. Right, I, I think there's actually a document in the, in the docs folder that describes some metadata fields that uh, have been proposed. Um, we should probably update that with the additional fields that you're looking for uh, to be in there. Sure, yeah. Could someone point me at that? I don't think I've come Yeah, I'll, uh, I need to look it up. Uh, okay, thank you. Get it to you. Okay. Uh, and then the second topic uh, within the model zoo, and although it's not super, what Adam said is it's not super related to model zoo, um, I unfortunately just put it in under model. So. Sorry for the misclassification. I, I'll try to expand it so that it's not just model zoo. Uh, but at the same time, um, Chenming also kind of uh, had a suggestion on the model zoo. And uh, I, I saw Denisa also kind of uh, had some ideas. Uh, but uh, basically, um, Chenming was the thing that uh, we need to have the, the model test to be good. Uh, I don't think that gets here today. But uh, he wants to have the model test um, extended to cover all the models in the model zoo. Um, right now, there are only a few models uh, that are being covered. And then uh, Denitra kind of seconded this uh, into model zoo that uh, it should have uh, good examples and it should be high quality. I think Denitra was saying that um, she wanted to uh, list out how the data should be ingested for the, the models on the model zoo, that that example should be shown. Uh, but I think that uh, we should talk to uh, Wendy and Prasant. Yeah, he, he's not on the call today. But. Okay, yeah, so I think we should uh, um, put this to one thing. Um, for the folks who are uh, on the call, uh, Dimitra uh, is going to uh, work, yeah. she's going to uh, um, Switzerland to get her PhD, so she's handing it over to one thing uh, to take care of models. Too. And so but, uh, that's why we're, we're talking about here. So uh, I guess we'll follow with uh, one thing uh, on these two topics. Okay, so any questions or comments on, on this uh, before we move on to quantization? All right, let's move on to quantization then. And so, uh, 
we collected uh, two comments uh, from Chenming and then uh, also Ta. Um, Chenming was uh, mentioning that we need to have a quantization specific optimizations. And I think that there is also uh, the example that he posted here is from Glow. Um, so he wanted to include uh, quantization specific optimizations to um, Onyx and then uh, Ka wanted to, in general, uh, expand the model too so that it has the, the quantized model. Uh, house. I think we do offer the, the script for quantize, quantizing the model for Onyx, but I don't think that we have a, a quantized uh, models uh, in the model so yet, if I'm not mistaken. Is that yeah, true, Prasant? Yeah, that's correct. Um, there's okay. been several requests to, to do that. Uh, someone, hopefully we can get some uh, contributors. I see. And, uh, we work with um, Hugging Face. Is that something that could be posted on Model Zoo or? Uh, it can be. I mean, uh, as you know, we publish a blog where the quantized Onyx model, um, you know, from Hugging Face uh, does pretty well. Um, it's possible to post it here. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, we probably have to get Hugging Face's permission to do that. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, yeah, that'd be a really good example. Um, uh, because that's uh, like a model that can be run in production settings and um, also Microsoft and Hugging Face both worked on it. So everybody knows that it's a very high quality. And I guess in, just in general, the, I, I know the article you guys published, um, it was talking about one question model, but I was wondering if because uh, Hugging Face, uh, their transformer library has a lot of models in there, and uh, maybe the top ones, uh, if, if we were to able to apply quantization there, then I think it would be something very meaningful. So maybe we should reach out to Hugging Face and then kind of ask them if more can be done there. Yeah. yeah something like BERT or GPT-2 probably would be of interest. And uh, I unfortunately didn't get a chance to look at the quantization and specific optimization uh, that's in Glow. Um, but I guess uh, we can take a look at what are some of the things that we can take advantage of. And this will also probably be related to the IR discussions that we were supposed to have for the last time. But I did watch the video, but I don't think that we had a chance to talk about it. For this one, I'm not sure. Are the I haven't looked at them either, but I'm not sure if they belong in Onyx or if they belong in a runtime. Quite possibly runtime because uh, it's coming from Glow, yeah. but uh, have to check. So sorry, sorry for not being the homework. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll regarding, definitely follow up. regarding the optimization. Um, the Onyx spec itself does not really um, specify how to optimize the graph. That's right. We, it's, it's explicitly left up for but, uh, other Yeah, students. but there is there was some uh, discussion on. Um, so if you do like a lay uh, up level test with the the Q and DQ uh, in the in the middle of the graph. Um, do we need to enforce that up level conformance or? The conformance can be done at the graph level because the runtime can do optimization of the graph. And uh, if you look at the the up, up by up result, it may differ. But if you look, compare the whole graph output, it will match. So, do we care about those kind of optimization in the at the onyx level, or do we leave that to the uh, the runtime? And I think it's better to leave it for the runtime. That's something we can discuss, I guess. Yeah, I think um, this will be an interesting topic to talk about um, on the, the IR side as well. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, in general, I think optimizations are best left out of the Onyx spec scope. Um, if there's some sort of constraint checking that needs to be added 
that could be part of Onyx Checker, uh, you know, just to make sure um, all, the, all the pieces are set up correctly. Okay, how about we uh, follow up with Ka and uh, see what you think on this particular topic? Would that be a good follow-up step? Yeah, we can we can follow up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I thought that we actually had a lot of things to talk about, uh, but we have five minutes left. A any questions? I know that uh, there are a lot of people participating in this uh, discussion. So, um, any any questions from the community or comments on the the topics that we discussed so far? Um, I, I noticed that model zoo models um, are, are in different uh, upset versions. Is there any attempt to move them to most recent one? Yeah, that was discussed uh, a long time ago. Originally, there was an attempt to kind of always, whenever we do a release, we also update all the Onyx Zoo models. Uh, and that's what the version uh, converter was uh, meant to be used for. Um, so you don't have to go, you know, go to the source framework and wait for them to update the converter and, and re-export the model. You can just upgrade the model. Um, th but I don't think the version converter uh, is necessarily fully up to date. So we haven't been able to do that, I don't think. And then um, the, the second issue has been, you know, it's not clear whether that's necessary. Um, uh, I mean, this is not true for every runtime, but at least for Onyx runtime, it supports all the versions of Onyx. So even if you have an older offset model, it'll still run. Um, so you don't need a newer offset model unless you're using a op that's in the newer offset. Yeah, we found one uh, with older uh, version, including upsample that's deprecated. That's true. That there, there, there have been a few cases where they're using deprecated ops, and those models, yes, those need to be updated. But in general, if, if the model contains ops that have not been deprecated, but they're using an older offset, uh, they, they're strictly not required to switch to the new offset. Understood. Yep. And that also echoes uh, what Dinitra brought up, um, I think a couple of days ago on the onyx.ai web uh, document. And so, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Chen. Sure, no problem. Okay, any others? So I guess that the, the other thing I'm interested in is different language bindings for the onyx tool set in general. Um, I haven't had the chance to do a lot of research on this particular topic yet so it might just be that i've not found the appropriate bit but obviously most of the tooling is in python at the moment or c um, i'm interested in having tooling from java so i can write models out from java um, or from the jvm more generally um, so i, I don't it, it, presumably the scope of the of the current onyx code base is just to support python and c um, and uh, i guess is, is there a What's the interest of people about different platforms and supporting those? Hey, uh, hi, it's uh, Nick Pentreath here from IBM. And uh, um, I think it's also worth noting that uh, JVM support in particular is quite interesting um, for, for kind of uh, Spark, uh, potential, potential support for Spark and Spark ML. So I know at the moment it's, uh, you know, the, the, it, the Python API is supported, but um, but not the kind of Scala or, J, uh, or JVM, Java. Um, so yeah, the, I'm also kind of interested in, in, the, in the plans for the, the Java, you know, potential Java API or bindings, um, which would make things like Spark support a lot more, you know, native. Are you talking about like the converters and the checkers? For converters, ultimately, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd like to be able to load in an Onyx model file and just inspect it and look through it and sort of validate it um, from Java and just so I know what it's in it. And then, yeah, I, I want to be able to write a converter from my library into the Onyx format and at the moment without 
sort of Java tooling, I think I'm going to have to do that all in native code and it'll be significantly more painful than it would be. Yeah. I mean, as a community, we're very for the spot that, side, um, someone has yeah. contributed an R library, Onyx R, I think. Um, but yeah, no one has contributed a Java one yet. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to volunteer to write one because it's a lot of work. But um, if there are people who are interested in it, maybe we can sort of coalesce somewhere and, and see who's, who wants to, to work on what. There, there may be a um, you know, the, the approach that, that a few other uh, libraries have taken is to use the Java CPP presets. So it kind of auto generates stubs based on the, the C API. And that might make that might be a good starting point, um, but agreed, it's it's a it's a non-trivial undertaking. But um, you know, it would make things a lot easier for JVM land. And for example, again in you know, in Spark, um, just speaking from from my kind of uh, experiences, as a, you know, uh, commit on that project. Um, a lot yes. of stuff is obviously done in Python, in particular for machine learning and, and the deep learning side. So that so Python is kind of great, but um, typically the way you, you do things is, is uh, implement them on the Scala side and then provide a Python, you know, wrapper around the Scala or Java side. So it definitely is a, is a more native way of doing things. Um, and I think would, would be more, ultimately more sustainable uh, for Spark converters. So I'm, I'm also very interested in that. For, for Spark, Spark, you want to be wanting to support Java 8 plus, right? But the minimum uh, Java yeah. version will be eight, because okay. yeah. um, yeah. there are things coming down the pipeline in newer Java versions that will make um, native interop significantly easier. Um, like um, it will automatically generate bindings for you. But um, yeah, if we need to target eight, then that's a, a lot more work. Sadly, Spark is um, is well. I mean, I suppose it, it, it's both positive and negative. But you know, it's it's such a kind of large piece of infrastructure code that. Um, Backwards sure. compatibility, super yeah, it's, critical. It's, so yeah, I, it's I don't not moving. Well. I yeah, was just checking that, that, that that's what you were. That's what your target was. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think um, this would be interesting to see when we do the mapping uh, if there will be enough interest. I mean, it is a serious undertaking. So if there's enough interest, and if uh, people, in, uh, if the community is willing to work on it, then I think. Um, uh, this would be a uh, good good thing to explore. So, thanks for bringing this up, uh, both uh, Nick and Adam. Okay, we are officially out of time, but um, are, are there any more uh, before we go? That's it. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you, guys. Um, uh, thanks for joining, and. Uh, uh, Thanks for submitting the feedback as well. Really appreciate it. And the recording will be posted uh, later today. Thank you.